Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are diving into something that every Appian developer uses it on a daily basis. That is looping functions. You have probably used abang for each functions a lot, but abang for each is not the only looping function. There are a lot of other looping functions as well that you can see here, like all, any, filter, merge, none, reduce, reject. In this video, we are going to discuss about all these functions using a live data set. No more boring theory, we will visually see that how data transforms using each one of the functions here. So let's get started on to that. In order to understand the looping functions, I have built a data subset here. So this is a kind of a scorecard for the students here. Here you can see the name of the students, their age, their grade and their score as well. So Alice is there, Bob's around six students are there and each one of them has their score present in this data subset. And in this data subset, we will take various use cases and we'll try to apply each one of the looping functions and then we will see that how they behave with the data subset and what is the expected output as well. The very first thing that we are going to start here with obviously the for each here. So in the for each, when you go in the definition of the for each, not only this definition but any of the definition of the looping function you will go you will find some similarity there so first is that they will iterate over each item in the list obviously because they are a looping function and then they will return the result either they will return some output or they will return either true or false as well so in the for each functions when you will go it will iterate over a list of item and it has some function variable here present fb means function variable so every bang item means it will return the current item let's say that my current use case is that i want to give five grace mark to each one of the student what i want to do here then in that case for each is going to be very helpful in this case here for example see the first student alice has got 85 percent if i increment the score by five percent here you will see that the score has now become 90 not only that, it has also changed. This particular number has also changed. If I again increment by five more, you can see this student is now in the past category as well. So this is how the forage works. Each item in the array has been incremented by five. Now, if you want to see what was the logic used in order to achieve this data, you will see that this is the button for forage here, plus five score. What it is doing for each score data, now, local bank student data dot score is the array of the items, all the scores. So here you can see Alice has 85 marks as of now. So when we do for each year, what we do in the current item, we increment the value by five. And now we will save it back into that particular items here. So we will use a for each to save data and each of the item will get incremented here. That's how the for each works. So I hope that is clear. Now let's move on to our next part that is all function. When you will go in the definition of all, you will see that it will call a rule or function that returns true or false for each item. Obviously, each item it will iterate over and it will call that function for each item and then it will return true if all the item becomes true. If we take a real time example, let's say that I want to know that whether all the students have passed or not. So what I will do, I will take on all function here. So basically it will check whether it has passed or not, whether it has passed or not, all the student has passed or not. Okay, how are we doing that? If you go in the all here, you will see that I am saving it into a variable here. I'm calling a simple rule that check if a student passed or not. What is this rule about? If you check this rule, basically I am checking if the number is greater than or equal to 50, then it will return true else false. So this function will return true or false. And now I have passed all the score here. What will be the output? Click on this one here and you will see that no, all students have not passed at all because they are less than 50 here. If you want that, no, I want to manipulate the data and make some student pass by myself. See, both are now 50. And again, if you try to use all, yes all students have been passed that's how it was this rule it will call that rule for each item in the array and then it will evaluate it so that was about the all function let's move on to the next function that is any with any 
again if you go in the definition of any again the pattern is similar like it will call a rule for which will return true or false and now it will check that if any item is true or not means if any one of them is true or not so my use case is that i just want to check that has any student failed or not as of now you can see here two students have failed so it will give me yes some students have failed up here if you check the logic what i have used here any i have again called that if a student has failed again this is just checking if the number is less than 50 here and it will just store true or false and i'm just printing that data value here yes some student have filled up here but again if we want to let's say that i want to increment the score of everything now everybody has passed up here if i now use any like it will say that no none of the student has failed why because everybody has passed up here so that's how the any works now let's move on to the next part that is the filter function if you go in the filter function again the same pattern it will call a rule for each item and returns any item for which the return value is true means it is not just written true or false it is in the complete data set here for example i need to find here only the past student if i click on that you will see that the failed student data has gone away it is only showing me the past students data only how it is working if you go in the filter function here you will see that i am saving the data into filter results and i am calling again the same rule if a student has passed or not and i am passing all the scores here what actually happens here if i click on the filter you will see that this is the filter results if i click on filter it will give me all the numbers which have been passed here and that's why like i am using some other functions to save the data and show it here again we can also you know like increment everything and let's say like everybody has passed and then if i click on filter now no data will be ignored this time every data returns as it is so i hope this filter part is clear now the next function is reject function here what does reject do when you will go in the definition of reject you will again see the same pattern like it will call a rule for each item in the list and reject any item for which the return value is true basically here as well you would have to call a rule and then if that rule is true it will reject that particular value so here my huge case is that i want to in this whole data subset i want to remove those students who have passed here so here you can see remove past i have written here if i click on that i will only get the data for those students who have filled here again we will go back in the logic and see that how reject is working here so if you go in the interface if i click here reject basically reject is saving the data into rejected results here so this is nothing but our rejected results if i click on the reject here remove past see which of the data it has given it has given me those scores which have failed here now again i have created a rule to check that if a student has failed up here so here you can see if the score is less than 50 they have failed means it is returning true else false here now again i am checking that which of the scores have been you know like less than 50 it is storing that data which is less than 50 and it is only returning those two results here so that's how it has been used here reject function now let's move on to the next function that is merge merge is also a looping function here if you go in the definition of merge the definition is that it will take a number of list and merge them into a single list basically if you see the definition let's say like two list are present there one two three and four five six and it will return the data in one list means three nested list it will create here now in our i want to merge that i just want to print the name of the student and their total scores here so if i click on merge name and score you will see that alice johnson what is the score 85 bob smith score is 62 all the students which have been there for them it is just merging the data for example i just want the failed students these are the failed i just want the merging of the data and then i will get charlie and ethan and their respective score as well it will help us to filter out the data as well when you use a combination of the functions here now let's check the logic for the merge function how it was used here when you go and check the logic for the merge function here it is there is a variable called as merge list 
and when you see the merge here it will say that local bank student data dot name means all the student data six are there all the name will come and then the data dot score and all their score will come and that's what we are printing directly on the screen here their name and their respective scores here so i hope that this part is clear now let's move on to the next part that is a reduce function here reduce function when you go in the definition of reduce you will find that it will call a rule or function for each item it will pass the result of each call to the next one and at the end it returns a resulting value in our case the example that we have taken is kind of average we want to calculate the average of all the students which are present up here now when you see the logic for the reduce function you will see that what i am doing here is i have created a variable called as total score here so as of now total score is null now reduce i have written the very first here is the context i just want the sum initial value is going to be zero this is also called accumulators value and this is the score of the student all the score i have passed up here first of all it will calculate sum of zero plus this one then again it will pass into the next iteration whatever is the result and then it will keep for each item in the list and ultimately it will store the data into local bank total score let's see how it works if i try to click on average you will see that the total score got 392 here whatever is the total score and in order to calculate average i have just divided by total number of students there that's how we have got the average so if i try to get the average score you can see here i will get 65.33 and total students have been six here we can do some other combination as well for example i want the average of only the past student so i will just filter with past student and then i will try to find the average here so average of past student 78 which is much better than 65 here let's do the average for the field student what has been the average so these are the two scores and then if i try to calculate average it is just 39 here so i hope reduce is clear now let's move on to the next function that is none when you go in the definition of none here you will see that it will call a ruler function that has been the usual pattern in all the looping functions that returns true or false obviously and the output it what it returns with the intent to discover if no items will true means no item in the array should be true here now for the use case i have taken that has any student scored the marks above 90 so if you see here in our array none of the students are there who have scored above 90 what none should return it should return true yes none of the results are true click on none and yes it will return that yes none of the students are true but if i try to increment the score by five years now see here 90 is this one and this one as well if i try to use the none function it will return no means none of the students have full that is a false some students are there which have scored more than 90 percent as well so that's how this none function works click on reset and the data will back to reset here so with the help of this playground kind of tutorial we have to see all important uh, looping functions here there is another looping function apply as well but even if you see the definition of apply function you will see that check out the new looping function for each it does everything apply does but with easier syntax with the new function for each it does everything but apply used to do that's why i'm not taking it but all these functions i hope that uh, you have got a high level understanding next time when you try to learn something you can also create a poc something like this to understand it visually and that was all about the looping function i hope it makes better sense now next time when you will try to go in the definition of all these functions it will make more sense and you will be able to understand in a better way and relate to a real time examples as well and comment below and tell me which app in function you want me to cover next so that was all for now guys thank you